Hey everyone, welcome to Maker Tales. In this video, we're going to be going over Gravity Sketch and putting it through the Sculpting Series Overview. So, if this is the first one you've seen, we give these three tests. These three tests are to create a cube that is exactly 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. This here lets us know how good it is at rigid modeling. Then we also are going to create our cup, which is basically going to let us know if it can do subdivision modeling. And then last but not least, we will do an organic shape that will be our tree. From there, we will then give this an overall mark along with checking out the extra features and the learning curve of the program. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So Gravity is known for its organic modeling, but it does have a way of doing slightly rigid modeling. It took me quite a long time to get this, but using the grid beta and getting the 10 centimeter grid here, we are able to model in a nice little 10, you have to hold down the trigger on this one and hold down on this one to snap it inside of the grid. If you don't do that, it's going to snap outside of the grid and center things. So that there, we are going to call our one millimeter cube. We're going to go and create a whole bunch of these so that we can then create our exact 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter cube. So this is one millimeter in our space, even though this says it's 10 centimeters. So I'm going to go and create another one that's going to go right here. And then using the select tool, we're going to go four, six, oh, undo. So, so one, two, three, four, five let's delete this one using these five let's place that there so there we have oh that's not what i want and one thing that i don't like is i can't change the color of this so let's well maybe i can but i haven't figured it out yet one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so there we go that there is going to be our one centimeter and this actually to scale 1% boom is 1 centimeter in VR. So that's pretty good. However, let's see what happens next because this is quite interesting. I'm going to grab this, going to copy it, place it like this and place it like this. And then here it should be pretty easy to create another cube. Let's go for a red that's going to fit in here, right? So here we go. Now the locking, as you can see, is completely working against me. No problem. Let's just move it. So let's make this nice and big so we can really work well with it. And as you see, I cannot move this how I want it. All right. Well, one thing of Gravity sketches, if you hold and click, there's this extra options. So maybe we can just edit the shape itself. So let's grab this face and pull it. And no matter what, it mirrors it. So our only workaround is to delete this. Let's go and copy this entire thing. Whoa, not like that. This entire thing. And let's chuck it over here if I can get it to work for me. Wow, now this is not working for me at all. Let's just do this one by one so then we don't screw it up. So I'm going to use this guide so I can make sure that I can get what we're looking, which is for our exact one centimeter cube using our guides that we have here of our 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. Yes, I've screwed that one up, I know, but that's fine, because to be totally honest, I'm not going to be using that guide over there. 
but I will be using this guide here. So using this here, I'm now going to go back here. I'm going to hold down on this trigger over here, here, and then we're going to go to that corner, this corner, get a good view, make sure we're in both corners where we want to be. Wow. See, did I get that? Did I get that right? And there we go. That there is technically the best you can do solid modeling-wise in Gravity Sketch. Now, one thing I want to say is that this isn't a tutorial. This is just what I feel like in my small mini first impressions review of all the programs. So next up, let's go and do the cup. Now, CUP is to test the subdivision modeling. Unfortunately, you cannot do subdivisions. So let's just go for a base of five with a height of, let's go for a height of 10. Why not, right? There we go. Actually, let's give it a, a little bit. Look at that. The, the centers went off on this. Why is that? I am on grid mode, so I don't understand why that's happened. That's very strange. Of course, one thing to keep in mind is that all of these programs are still in beta, so take everything you're seeing here with a little bit of pinch of salt. And also, this is my opinion on everything. So next up... One of the things that they have that's great is their revolve tool here. So using the grid, I can center this up on here. Beautiful. Let's go for there. Get nice over around about here. You can see here is our revolve. I've got the grid on, so it doesn't really show the line. So let's turn the grid. Oh, let's move that back over there. Let's turn the grid off. Now, why is it not coming up? All right, so we're going to start down here. We're going to go out, up, and over, back down, and in. So that there is a good fundamental starting cup shape. Here, it's not subdivision, but you can click and edit, and now we can undo the revolve, see what we've got, and edit all these control points of the revolve. So let's just quickly edit these. So that's a close there. This, I want to be a nice curve like that. Let's bring that up a little bit, like a real mug would be. And I don't need any of these here. This is just going to be straight up to there, as if this was subdivided, so it should be one there, one in that corner, round-ish, about there, and a nice little down there, let's delete that, delete that, delete all of these until we get down to here, where we're going to want to do our nice little corner there bring that down to there and there we have sort of let's bring that that way a little bit so it's a straight line of course i could use the grid here to make this a little bit easier but now using that let's close it off and that there is oh, it's a little bit of a thickish mug. So maybe I'll open it back up. And let's close that a tiny bit. And close it up up here too. There we go. That looks more mug-like to me start with anyway. So another thing you can control is actually the thickness of this, which is quite nice. I'm going to keep it super thin for now. 
and you can also change the symmetry that we're using here. You can even simplify the points, but you can't subdivide it. So now with that, I'm going to close that up, click OK, and then I'm going to add our handle, which I'm going to be using the stroke tool on that. Clicking in, I'm going to turn on a plane so I can make it perfectly to this. Again, I am going to literally just go quite exaggerated here. That is the worst handle I've ever seen, but that will work because I can now grab it, edit it, and now I can edit all the points. Now, I've never seen a round handle, so let's sort that out first by just editing the shape here more to our liking, which is probably something around there. And then let's edit all these control points. Simplify it a couple, actually. There we go. Make sure that we're not... If we want to add another point, we just trigger, and we'll add another one. However, if you trigger in the one same spot and don't move it, it's a little bit confused. Ah, that looks stylish enough for my liking for now. So let's see if I go and put this into the scale that we want, which is 1%, and I move that. That is definitely mug size to my liking. However, that's a little bit thin. So can I make that bigger? I cannot. That's a little bit of a bummer that I can't make that. I can't increase the scale just a little bit. Well, let's let's go for that. That that'll do for me for right now. And then the last test that I've got is the organic modeling. Now, organic modeling is something that Gravity Sketch does pretty damn well, and I have had a go at this already. So I'm just going to do a time lapse of a bonsai esque tree that I've already done, and I was trying to get as organic as I could, but I realized at the end that I was going too granular into the details.
and show you a couple of the extras. Now, the extras are all here normally in the save menu, so I'm going to save this here and I'm going to call this test. Um, cube and mug. Done. And it's very quick saving, which is brilliant. Even when I had the tree, it was very quick saving. Now, if you want to export this, here are the export functions. There is pros here, which is a heftier price tag. So I'm just going to go for an OBJ here. Hit export on that. Test and mug. Done. Sorry about that little cut edit there. As I was going through the extras, hitting save opens up a window, so it came over the recording of this whole part. So in the settings, you've got save, you've got the screenshot, find my sketch, home orientation, then you've got file types of exporting, which is OBJ and all these here. Then you've got sketch bag, create new, exit. Now, as this is part of the extras, the price is part of the extras which there is a price. The price is on the screen right now for you to see of currently while I was making this. Then there's scenes that you can, scenes, not scenes, um, reference images that you can put out and snap and do reference to that. Then there's prefabs, which are brilliant. You can import AB, OBJ files and scale gizmos and built-in modes and the brilliant bit is these guys here because you bring this guy in and when you edit him or her lets you have complete customization of joints here on everything so you can imagine using this to do what you wish with it Whee. Sorry. There's also layering, which is brilliant because you can create new layers, create different objects in each layer, deleting layers, and all the rest. And then there's a brilliant learn tab, which has, I think, yeah, here, 26 tutorials on, on Gravity Sketch. Plus, there's a user guide on the screen that you can use. And all of these are rip offable, so then you can put them out watch them while you're actually modeling so you understand what's going on. And then it's got a lovely little, or is it in settings here, this torch. You can change the lighting within the scene really easily. And you can have it on one angle and then move it by just moving this top one here. And that works well when you're changing um, the reflective surfaces. And here are also the workspaces that you can see in your all black, gray room, and go into this lovely, what are they calling it? Warehouse and the studio lighting here. Or you can bring in Zebra, which is for reflective materials, or custom ones, which is changing the entire color of a scene. Now, I like the gray room most of all, but that there are the extras. All right, now the part of the test that we're getting into is the one of seeing the output that we get. So inside of your documents, you would get a gravity sketch folder. Inside of that, you have exported sketches. You get these lovely little zipped files, and then from these zipped files, you have exactly what you have here. Now, what I'm wanting is this OBJ, so let's chuck this OBJ into here. Let's put it, import it at the scale that is set and the orientation that is set to. So here it is, one to one scale, uniform, input it as groups, and here we have it. So look at that. What do you know? So it looks like Gravity Sketch lied to us and that I think there are 10 centimeters is actually one millimeter. So let's take a look at that inside of perspective, change this to shaded so we can see this a little better. So it does work on a triangle based system here. And here we can take a look at our cube. So let's explode this now so we can work with it. 
grab this cube out, do our lovely little distance test, and we're going to go from vertex to vertex, and it is one millimeter. Oh, so, wait, I was wrong there. So, our one millimeter, so it is all scaled down a lot. So there, that's supposed to be in their system, that's supposed to be one meter. Keep that in mind, because we created each one of these to be 10 centimeters. So this cup is teeny tiny currently. So let's re-import this quickly. So now we'll do the importing, but this time we will scale it up by one. So there we have it. Now exploding this block once again, we will get the scaling that we were looking for in the first place. which is our 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter cube. So that there is that. And here we have our mug. All the objects are brought out individually. So as you can imagine, if I import the tree, this tree is going to be one hefty object heavy file because every single one of these is an individual object. Every single stroke, every single everything here. So my leaves are actually made up of individual objects, but that can be a pro or a con. Anyway, that's there how it looks like on screen. Now back to the ratings. So now we get into the final rating. So first with the rigid modeling, I find it a real disappointment that I can't go and edit these faces without it mirroring to the other side. So it only gets a two rigid modeling wise. Now, in the sense of subdivision modeling, it's a good try and it's a lot better than I have had in other programs, but it still isn't subdivision modeling. Subdivision is when you create primitive shapes and subdivide it and add more faces. So I'm going to only give it a two and a half out of five. And then finally we get to organic modeling, which it is pretty good at. However, a true organic modeler will tell you that this here is not organic modeling. Yes, it is very fluid, but it's quite constrained in the ways that you can merge and manipulate it. It's all additive. There's no subtractive. There's no pushing and pulling of vertices or anything like that. So I'm only going to get it a 3.5. Now we get into the details of things. Now the user interface is pretty good. It is quite intuitive and I do like it once you get into it, but you have to always remember that clicking and clicking again will always give you more options because you always forget when you click this once and you just see that and you click and you go and then you realize there's actually, if you click it again, you'll get a whole bunch more options. And it took me a while to learn that if you grab it and press this, then there's editing. So because that, I'm going to give this a three on the user interface. Now, with the user interface comes the learning curve. The learning curve was substantially helped by all these tutorials that they offer right inside of Gravity Sketch, but it is still quite a learning curve due to the submenus and the editing of the point curves that they give you. So the learning curve overall isn't that hard, isn't that super easy, so I'm giving it a three out of five. Now we get into the extra features, which there are actually a whole bunch, more than I thought at the beginning. And due to all these extra features, including layering, giving you rigged models, reference images, and a whole bunch of settings and the savings and outporting and importing OBJs, this gets a solid 3.5 for the extra features. It's definitely in the, good, in the right direction, but for something that you pay, you might want a little bit more than what is on offer here. But I'm really glad that they've integrated layers, and I'm really glad that they've in integrated prefabs and importing of OBJs. Now it comes to the final overall of Gravity Sketch. Gravity Sketch is very powerful, 
And remember, this overall one is very much my own feelings towards it, as I primarily do rigid modeling and model to create furniture. It's only going to get a three because I can't get in there, especially with rigid modeling, and edit vertices and change faces really easily to scale to work for me. And that's it. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. That there is my overview of Gravity Sketch. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumb up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down and let me know why so I can improve these for you, give you the information that you're looking for. And as always, let the quest continue.